Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at the Transformers Siege Decepticon Phantom Strike Squadron. This set includes Voyager Class Skywarp, a repaint of Voyager Class Starscream, Battlemaster Decepticon Fracas, a redeco of Battlemaster Firedrive, Battlemaster Shroot, a redeco of Battlemaster Aimless, and Battlemaster Terradactyl, a redeco of Battlemaster Teraxodon. This set was released in 2019 as an Amazon exclusive. Now I know what you're thinking. Kit, you covered this mold four times already! Why are you doing it for a fifth? You know what I have to say to that? Fuck you, I have a Thundercracker review in the pipeline too. That being said, Skywarp is probably the most unique out of all six of the Seekers in my collection. Of course, he still has the exact same damage effects as his kin, but Skywarp shakes things up a little with his gleaming silver painted nose cone. He also shakes things up in the context of Skywarps in general, being an inexplicable charcoal gray instead of his normal Corvine Vanta black. The purple is also somewhat muted as well, barely registering against the black in normal lighting conditions. Just try to pick out his Decepticon symbols, I dare you. I never really had this complaint about the other Seekers I've reviewed, just because I didn't care very much in those cases, but I think there was just way too much of this weathering effect. Like, I like the weathering effects when they're subtle and subdued, like on crosshairs and such, but this looks like someone drips silver paint all over Skywarp. What Hasbro should have done for the Seeker mold is make heat marks on the wings and nose cone, if anything. Skywarp's transformation is exactly the same as the rest of his aerial brethren, to little surprise. It's the same shell-forming, under-kibbly, little-effort scheme that drew many a fan's ire last year, and is barely remarkable now. None of the tolerances have changed any from the last three times I talked about this mold, which is fine, albeit expected. I'm really glad that Starscream's hinge issue was isolated to him and him alone. One thing that was not isolated to Starscream was these proportions. The Siege Seeker mold is quite the leggy boy, and Skywarp is no exception. Honestly, it's kind of jarring seeing this next to the upcoming Earthrise Starscream, since I've gotten so used to the Siege design that Earthrise's return to Classics proportions seems so clunky and unwieldy. Anyway, Skywarp rocks this mold in his classic colors, and the purple robot bits are far more pronounced than the purple jet bits. Like, his biceps and feet actually look like a separate color here. Aside from his Jackson Pollock boots and gauntlets, Skywarp features a painted black midriff. According to TF Wiki, Skywarp is supposed to come with the same smirking head sculpt that Thundercracker came with, though I've never heard of such an occurrence, and my copy sure as hell didn't come with that sculpt. Just like the other Seekers, Skywarp comes with his own pair of HPI Null Ray laser launchers, cast in Skywarp's own charcoal gray, with no changes to the sculpt whatsoever. However, that's not the only weapon he comes with. The first is the Duo Charge Electrostatic Photon Cannon, otherwise known as Fracas. He is identical in every way to Fire Drive except in coloration, and I presume he'd be pretty unwieldy in any Scourge's hand. He comes with copies of Fire Drive's effect parts cast in a gummy orange instead of pink. His transformation is the same as Fire Drive's, though Fracas enjoys some nice copper accents on his torso and a burnt orange face. Skywarp's next weapon is the Manifold Ion Particle Blaster, otherwise known as Shroot, formerly known as Hair Splitter, originally one of Spinister's target masters. This mold is a retool of Blowpipe from Wave 1, and comes with some really wispy blast effects that don't look good for either of their intended purposes. Shroot's robot mode is fairly similar to Blowpipe in sculpting and fracas in coloration, though Shroot has some nice cool blue accents on his tummy and face. Skywarp's last weapon is the double-edged Flank Strike Axe, otherwise known as Terror Daxtel, a wholly new character. It's my headcanon that this is Skywarp's own target master. The axe mode is really bulky and kind of boring to look at, being cast in the same colors as Shroot. Pterodactyl's weapon effect part is a three-dimensional apparition of a comic book punching effect, which is much appreciated. It's my favorite of the few melee weapon effects I have, and my favorite in this set. His transformation goes exactly how you think it does, and the pterosaur mode is charmingly cute. It's just a shame that his sculpted tail gets in the way of him standing straight up. Now I've been having a lot of trouble trying to find a good segue to lead into my articulation segments, so you know what? I'm not gonna have a segue! Fire Drive! 
his posability is pretty shit, just like most battle masters. So don't expect much out of this one, this one, or this one. He has ball jointed shoulders that go all the way around forwards and backwards, and they can go all the way outwards for a T pose. He has an ab crunch joint due to transformation, though it looks like he's unhinging his own spine while he does so. So it's not particularly recommended, but it is useful for some minor poses, I suppose. And his legs have a ball joint that can go all the way forward, and they can go backwards if you move the gun out of the way, and they can go all the way outwards. So that's pretty basic, but he doesn't really have any limitations in the few joints that he has. Shroot, or Hair Splitter, has a very similar situation. It's the exact same. He has ball jointed shoulders that go all the way forward and backwards and all the way outwards. He has ball jointed hips that go all the way forwards and all the way backwards if you move the gun out the way. And they can go all the way outwards. But instead of an ab crunch, he has an arcing back that opens up his gut. Terror Daxtel. He is very limited in his articulation. He can look up, but that exposes a peg underneath his neck, and he can look down, but that moves the handle of the axe mode out from his spine. His wings can't go much further out than this, and they can't go much further in than this. He can't flap, but he can kind of wiggle his fingers in and out, which is okay. And finally, his feet can move forwards and backwards. Now for Sky Warp. At his head, he has a ball joint, which allows for some nice movement all the way around. He can look up, he can look down, he can even tilt his head a little in a quizzical manner, or a rather bombastic, swaggery manner, considering his character as something of a prankster. His arms go all the way out for that and they can go all the way forwards and all the way around. His biceps swivel all the way around. He has a double jointed elbow, which is very, very nice. And his wrists swivel all the way around and they're pretty loose. Well, not loose, but rather easy to move. They're rather smooth is what I'm trying to say. And he has a surprise butterfly joint, which allows him to sort of try to cross his arms, if I can get him into position. Here we go, crossed arms. The wings can actually get out of the way. They can move back on a hinge so that you cannot see them from the front. And they have another swivel here that allows them to go upwards and swoop backwards and such to your tastes and pleasures. The waist swivels all the way around in theory, at least for transformation, but in robot mode, the shoulder stacks just get in the way. But this is a pretty natural range of movement for a humanoid, so I can't really complain too much. I mean, who really needs more waist swivel than that? A freak, that's who. The legs go forward all the way, and they cannot go backwards due to the back kibble. They can, however, go outwards, though they do get a little caught at the corner here. Things get a little tight in there, so now he can scrape his taint wherever he chooses. His thighs swivel all the way around pretty unimpededly, and his legs... Oh my god. That is a single joint, but it acts like a double joint because, as many have pointed out, this panel on the back of the calf sucks in and allows for greater range of a knee joint. And finally at the feet he has a whole slew of joints, first of which is an ankle tilt that doesn't really do much in this position, but it has a forward joint that allows it to go a little even deeper, but not much. It's not much deeper, but it is a little deeper. And finally, the toe and the heel can open and close. Hooray! Christ, this is a hard set to judge. Sure, pretty much everything in the box is a repaint of something, so the only real comparison to be made is cosmetic at first. However, these were all sold as a set, for $50 no less. In terms of the sheer amount of plastic and engineering you're getting for that price, it's not the worst deal in the world, but it starts to leave a bad taste in my mouth when I remember that it's just a Seeker and some Target Masters. And it's just $20 less than the Rainmaker 3-pack. 
Now, of course, Skywarp looks loads better than all three Rainmakers put together, and arguably is the best seeker out of the bunch, but that price is pretty steep. If you're fortunate enough to find it on sale for, say, $40, I'd say it's worth the pickup. Any more than that, and I would hesitate. Disregarding the price, it's time to give out some rankings. Just like Starscream and possibly controversially the Rainmakers, I'd rank Skywarp as above average. Though of course I put Skywarp above any of the others I've reviewed so far. As for the Battlemasters, I think all three of them deserve a crummy. Not because they're actually bad per se, it's just that they barely count as pieces of engineering at all and don't do much besides turn into implausible weapons. If Battlemasters and Siege weren't being sold separately at all, I wouldn't have given them a rating. And that's that. If you like this video or otherwise found it helpful or informative, then please leave a like, share, and subscribe. For my next review, I'll be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Megatron. This has been Kick Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.